everybody this is Anthony from Sunny Creates welcome to my YouTube channel today I'm going to show you how to make a mini uh, notebook and it measures um, 14 centimeters by 8 centimeters it has an elastic closure and um, it's held together with a cardboard button I have got a video that's uh, labeled um, embossed toilet roll ephemera where i show you how to make these uh, cardboard ephemera the only difference is i have punched two holes in this whereas the one in the video there i have punched one hole in it so if you open it up you will notice that there are pages on this side and with a little bow and the reason why we've got the bow is because you can open up the bow and then you can add more pages to it as they get finished and you can also tear off the pages should you wish to once you have completed writing on them there are a few other versions and here's another version i haven't completed this a reason being i don't have any scrap paper to put in it but this one just keeps um, the lid of the box or the side of the box intact. And here's another version here. We, it's the very same as the other one, except that this one has Velcro dots to close it, which means that you don't need to have the elastic closure. I've actually made the uh, notebook with a stock block uh, cube box and uh, this is how it looks but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to make it with this i shall give you the measurements if you want to use any other cardboard uh, the measurements for it um for the back spine i'm uh, sorry front back and spine will work out to 18 centimeters so 18 centimeters across and um 14 centimeters uh vertical um this on the uh, front flap cover it's eight and a half centimeters the spine is one centimeter and uh, the back is also eight and a half centimeters so should you uh, be using an ordinary piece of cardboard that would be the measurements okay so let's get started okay. so these are the pieces that you need and as I mentioned to you, uh, this one was made out of a pie box, so not a stock box, because I have very <laughs> limited supply of that. So here's the measurements again, 18 centimeters across with an eight and a half centimeter on each side and a one centimeter spine. Then for the flap on the inside, we should cut a, a piece of cardboard. Uh, it's um, seven and a half centimeters across and six centimeters wide with the two, two and a half centimeters and then score uh, your spine which is one centimeters and then another two and a half centimeters so what we're going to do here is we're going to um, cover this okay so here's a piece of um, a paper that I've used it is from my um, Christmas cheer uh, kit a digital kit and the measurements of this is um, 24 centimeters across and 16 centimeters wide and the reason I did that is I wanted a two centimeter approximately a two centimeter uh, fold inside on on the sides and on the top and bottom. I wanted a one centimeter fold and um, We, we uh, I left approximately two centimeters just to uh, For the spine depending on how it folds. Okay, so I've taken this and I have Folded it in half and the reason why I folded it in half because I want to try and match approximately the middle of the spine with the with the fold line so that we get a pretty even um, you know 
amount on either side so that seems to be well I'm not sure how everybody else does it but uh, what I like to do is that I like to start from the middle and the reason why I like to start from the middle is because um, of the fact that it's cardboard and it could yeah no it does take a little bit more paper to cover it so I'm just putting some glue down the middle of the spine and then I'm going to try and line it as best as I could centrally. So just looking at it from a central perspective. There we go. So once I got that sorted out, and I've make sure that it's stuck on properly. Oh, the good thing about this glue is that you can play around with it for a little while. It doesn't really matter because later on you're going to see that we are going to cover it. And now once that's stuck, then I want to go in and start sticking the corners, I mean the, the front flap down. you are happy with that and you can stick the back flap down as well what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to line everything up and I am trying to get the lines on the sides here I'm pressing in here and here so that I can see the two fold lines here and here because okay. what we're going to do then is we're going to be able to snip it on these fold lines so that the paper doesn't bunch up okay so there's your fold lines and then you'll take your scissor and on those fold lines you should be able to cut little rectangles on either side just so that the paper doesn't bunch up. So now what we are able to do now is that train the paper in a way and you are now going to glue the sides. Oh. And you can cut it out so that both edges match. And 
And what we need to do here is we need to cover the sides. Sorry. Let's burnish the sides down first. Okay. Before we stick it down, we need to check whether everything's looking good and nothing is creasing. Oh, that looks pretty good. So we will take out a smidgen, oh well, more than a smidgen. Then we can always ink our edges. I am using, what's this? Abandoned coral. Okay, so now that the edges are inked up, let's start adding the inside papers. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to add that one on that side. This one on this side. Let's do that. Now we're going to add this piece of paper on the spine. And how I want to add this piece of paper is I want to glue part of it first. Sorry, I was out of frame. I want to glue part of it first and then add it. Down and then ensure that I burnish it. Then add cover the spine. This is just to ensure that the paper doesn't bunch up on the inside. You can take a bone folder or whatever you may have. Sorry. And then just add some glue on the rest of it. Hopefully that should work pretty well. There we go. Okay. 
So, our paper has been covered and now we are going to cover the flap which we are going to add to the side over here. Now what I've done with the flap is that I've actually cut the piece of paper a little bit longer and the reason why I did that it would just be easier to be able to cut the rest of it off but you, know, you can do it where you can cut it exactly as well, that's fine too. As I said I use or try to recycle our monthly medication um, boxes so this is one of those that I am trying to recycle let's do it such that we can uh, only need to cut off one edge if we can do that successfully okay let's banish it Spine. Now you should let the spine sit a little bit longer than what I'm doing, but for the sake of the video, I'm trying to do it a little bit quicker. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do over here is that we are going to leave this to dry for a little while. But then what I've gone and done is that I've gone and made a template to be able to know where I need to put my holes for my eyelets. So if we look at the template and if we cover it, the template is sitting over here. Okay, so let's get it as close as possible to the edge. And let's just write down, this is the top. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over now because I've chosen that this is going to be the back of my cover. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put my template down there. Okay. And I am going to make two holes. I mean, two rings. Because that's where I'm going to punch for my brads. Okay. going to put our brads in sorry not brads eyelets eyelets not brads why do I keep on calling them brads I have no idea okay so I don't have uh, the most expensive eyelets so they're probably going to split on that side as you can see oh, but they will work for now there you go so there's your eyelids on that side and then you 
we're going to turn it around now. Now we're going to take the paper and we're going to just cut off the extra bit. Okay, I'm back and hopefully the dog isn't going to bark again. Right, so here we go. We've got our cover or our flap. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to line it up. You can you can erase these these markings if you want to. Um, to me, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And I'm going to then take the um, template that I've got and I'm going to use it to then punch out my holes again on that side oh <laughs> let's try that again let's remember that we got to put the top on the top oh well it worked out pretty well and then we've got to then put it on the side as well So let's punch out our holes. I'm not sure if you can hear him. He sounds a bit agitated. So now what we're going to do is we are going to glue this side of it down to match the eyelids on that side there. Okay. And what we could have done or what I should have done is glued it down first and then actually put on the eyelids. So that's something that you could also do. Let's just see how it's going to close. Oh, that's fine. Okay. And on this side, I'm going to put eyelets again. Ribbon will cover it. So let's add that glue again. And match it up. Yes. Wrong way, the wrong way. Let's try that again. That's better. Okay. What I noticed on this one is that because we cut it out, oops, lost its touch. Okay, so while that is dry. Let's look at our papers that we are going to be putting in. So I've used the same template on this one. And I've marked the papers that we will be putting in. I've just made them in batches. So let's take our crocodile cro again. And let's punch out the papers.
as you can see the papers are of different sizes varying sizes etc but uh reason being they are left over from other projects but if you're looking at you know the measurements of it it should and if you're cutting it out from other projects it should measure um seven across i'm sorry seven across and 13 down okay. so i'm not going to do all the papers i'm just going to do a few to be able to show you exactly what how we can actually add them in sorry if you can hear any noises my ribbon fell down all right so here we go so what we're going to do is we're going to add the ribbon from the back through the front and then through the papers sorry so we added the ribbon from the back and then it's going to go through the papers I made the ri uh, the ribbon. I cut it to be uh, fifty centimeters. So I've got quite a huge stack of papers here that I can then put through. Uh, but let's just say for now that this is the technique you're going to be using. All right. Yes. And obviously with the larger stack of ribbons, uh, sorry, papers, then when you fold this in, you will be able to have it sit more clearly and here's a bow there we go there's a bow and that's how it looks in the back Good. oh well we can neaten that up in the back but that's basically how it looks and then let's trim it to remove the edges, the frayed up edges. There we go. So that's that. And it, if you add more pages, then this would sit more flush and it will look a little bit better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see whether we can add the um, the closure. So here's my button that I'm going to use and I'm going to take the elastic. The elastic is about 30 centimeters uh, long. Once again, I am going to eyeball what's the middle of this. Well, almost the middle. <laughs> there we go. And then let's put a bread in as well. Okay.
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make one side a little bit longer than the other side. And you'll see why just now. I'm going to try and fit that through the bread. There you go. And let's pull it through shut. And then we're going to now add the The elastic. Let's turn it around. There we go. We we'll make a knot. the button. Well, you can make your knot as tight as you want to. And the reason why I haven't tightened that knot as yet is because I want to see how it sits. So. so can you see that it is a little bit uh, too loose? So I can open it up. tighten it again oh yes i forgot the reason why it's a bit loose as well is because i don't have all my papers in it so once i have all my papers in it this should push it up nicely so that would be fine and then you can just snip out the the excess depending on how long you would like it to be right so now the last part to this would be to decorate it Okay, so there we go. That's how it's going to look. And let's see what we have for decorations. I'm trying to keep the decorations as um not as not three D or as flat as possible. And the reason why I want to do that is I want this book to be used in my journal. Sorry, not my journal, in my handbag. Because I'm still from the old school where I believe that I need to see things in lists to be able to remember. And I need to write down lists in order to be able to do that uh, or remember and get wrap my mind around it. So hence the reason for this little book for all my um, Christmas shopping and goodies and gifts, etc. So let's see, we're going to probably do something like this. Let's add that little piece. So I'm going to decorate this and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the finished product. And what I'm going to do is also I'm going to add the other pages into it to be able to show you exactly how this should look. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back and what I've done is I've decorated the, the cover and um, now you'll see that this closure is a little bit more tighter and the reason being is that I did add the rest of the pages into this and I decorated it with some uh, ephemera that's in my Christmas tree uh, kit which is the bingo card and a little um, saying believe in the magic of Christmas so when you open it there we go right. and there's your booklet and then you close it so here's the other one remember this was the very first one we did and this here like so so there's two this one was made from this stock cube box which was this here 
and this one was made using a normal cardboard box which was my pie box and um, using the same measurements though on both the boxes so I hope that uh, this was insightful and informative and I hope that you go ahead and you make uh, yourself a little booklet you can use any theme as you can see here these were roses this was Christmas you can use one for your but for for uh, Easter you can use it for any other um, occasions if you're planning a birthday you can make one for a birthday or you can just make one that is an all year round in d any different themes so thank you for watching and please if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel I will be bringing you more videos of this nature in terms of recycling as well as I'm going to be starting working on my Christmas cheer kit so I will bring you some videos with regards to that my channel is sunny creates and take care and have a blessed day thank you